G'day and welcome to another video with BetterPix. Hope this finds you all well. Today we're going to be having a look at the updates to Adobe Camera Raw, which is version 17. It was released last month in October. And there's quite a number of great features in there utilizing AI to help improve your images. There's been questionable results with AI within Adobe software so far, so it'll be interesting to see if there are any improvements to the results. And uh, just to confirm, I also had a number of updates to uh, some of the feature set literally just before I hit record for this video. So we're uh, definitely working with the latest version. Be sure to check out my previous video that showed where to access and make sure that all of the new AI features are switched on. I'll link that below. All right, so we're going to start with the remove tool and you can see that it has the option there to use generative AI and also to detect objects. And now what we're going to do is just remove some of the people that are in this frame on this beach on the Gold Coast. We're just going to click and select all of them, including their shadows, just to be sure we get everything. So obviously painting uh, well outside of where those people are. And it will go through the process. You can see it selected everything there. And we're just going to click remove. And it goes through that result reasonably quickly. If I was using traditional me methods for removing objects, this would be a fairly straightforward process because being sand, it's very easy to clone uh, and add to different areas of the beach if we're removing some stuff. Uh, you can see it's going through an update again, so Adobe must be releasing stuff at the moment uh, to uh, help improve those tools. I'm assuming that's what's happening. I'll speed up this process so that we can get straight back into editing and we can see what the results are like. All right, so as with other uh, options within AI and Adobe software, we're given three variations that we can choose from. All righty, so let's have a look at those variations. We shall look at number three as well. From distance, they all tend to give us really good options. Let's just have a quick look at that area. And you can see that there's definitely a texture difference between, you can see the grittiness of the sand here, and it's it's almost like it's a little bit hazy, it's a little bit, um, I guess, fudged for one of we or a little bit out of focus. Now, while the lines in the sand definitely line up and everything looks realistic, I guess that lack of, I guess, textural clarity for want of better words, uh, does take a little bit away from the image. I mean, use on social media probably wouldn't notice, but uh, to be honest, I think if you can notice on a screen at 100%, then we probably need to be getting a better result. And certainly if you were printing to a large size, it would be very obvious indeed. So as that is an example, I'd probably be reverting tradi to traditional uh, methods of removing those people if I was wanting to. If we look at another image for removing elements, and again, we're gonna look at removing some people in this instance, we're gonna paint over these two people here, and we're gonna remove their shadows as well as having a little bit of a buffer around them, which is what Adobe suggests and recommends. Uh, let's remove. All right, so on the surface, once again, that's done a pretty good job. If we just have a look at a little bit closer, that looks pretty good on the scale of things. You can see that there is a bit of blur there. Uh, again, that lack of clarity that, that just breaks down when we've got the generated uh, pixels that aren't originally in the capture. Um, so again, on the surface, looking at the whole frame, not too bad, but closer inspection if you are using this on an image that is to be printed or presented in a large format, then I would definitely be taking far greater care in production of, uh, of the final file for print or presentation. So while generative AI is definitely getting better, it clearly still has a long way to go. So the next feature that we're going to look at is under the crop tool. And what it is, is if you're uh, say, for example, wanting to increase the size of your image or if you're, in this case, straightening the horizon, you can see it's quite uneven. Uh, traditionally, it would crop in on the image, which would mean that you're losing a little bit of resolution. Now you have this option to enable expand where you can take the crop tool and expand it out so that you're not losing any resolution at all. There we go. And basically what that allows you to do is maintain all of that resolution and use AI to regenerate or to generate uh, and fill in those gaps around the outside. Uh, so we're gonna go, yep, 
enable expand, which we've done. And you can see here we've got gener generative expand. So we're just going to hit generate and let that fill in the gaps and see what it does. Uh, again, this should be a fairly easy task. The sky um, is generally very easy to uh, clone uh, fairly seamlessly, as well as sand. Um, as well as this tree and some of the details over on the left hand side of the frame here. So let's just have a look at the results that we have. And you can see once again, it's done a pretty good job in generally matching it, but there is that that almost blur uh, there that um, you know makes it very obvious that something is going on, not something that you would normally be dealing with if... Um, if you were using, uh, for example, a clone stamp tool. And again, up on the top of the tree here, you can see that that's a little bit fuzzier than um, a l lack of detail compared to the rest of the tree. Uh, if we just have a look down on the side here, you can see there's a, a very definite line of, of um, you know, uh, regenerated material, I guess, for want of better words. So overall, looking at it as the full frame, yep, it looks like it's done a pretty good job. But if you look at look at it a little bit closer with a bit of uh, critical eye, then you can definitely see that there is still that resolving issue around um, pixels having the same clarity and texture that you would see in the original capture. We have a look at this image that I photographed recently in central Queensland. You can see that it's uh, a beautiful shot of the sky on a very clear night. If we have a look very closely, it is extremely grainy or very grainy. Um, it was shot with an R3, which is very good. I mean, it's done a great job overall, considering that it was shot at ISO 16,000. So, which, you know, not that long ago, you wouldn't even consider doing so. As good as it is, we definitely want to try and remove some of that noise. So if we have a look at the detail menu now, we have the denoise, raw details and super resolution built in. So obviously the denoise is the one that we are going to have a look at right now. Now, no other edits have been done on this image. If we have a look at light and color, uh, everything is as it was shot in camera. So let's head down to the denoise. And you can see it's going through its process. This can take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to speed this up so we don't have to wait. And you can see immediately that's done an incredible job on removing noise in this file. And it is now in an amazing place to start your edit. So that's a fantastic outcome. Uh, you can see also now, uh, one, now that I've used denoise, the raw details and super resolution are grayed out. So they're not usable, uh, automatically applied when using super resolution or denoise, currently unavailable when denoise is selected. So assuming that we're not using denoise, we can obviously go through that process of using super resolution and or raw details if we want to. Um, like I said, not available on this particular image because we're doing the denoise, but that's great that it's built into that uh, right-hand side panel of edit tools that are available to us. One of the great features of the new denoise built into Adobe Camera Raw is that it's now supporting more formats as well, including Apple Pro Raw from the uh, from the new iPhone. So uh, you can certainly take advantage of any low-light photography that you're taking where there might be excessive noise or at least more noise than you want to have in your image. And uh, that will allow you to take care of that quickly and easily. Also, you can now use the denoise raw details and super resolution non-destructively uh, in the detail panel and without creating a new DNG file, which is a really good feature. Now, there's nothing wrong with DNG files. They still give you the full flexibility of raw, but if you are able to simply apply it non-destructively to the original file, then you're not having a doubling up of files, which is always a good thing. Now the next image that we're going to have a look at and the final image today, final feature I should say, uh, as with the other images in these samples, this hasn't had any work or edits done to it at all. You can see it's original and straight out of camera, quite a flat profile. Uh, which is the way that I like to shoot so that I've got maximum flexibility and dynamic range in camera raw. And the new feature is Adobe Adaptive Profile. So you, you can see up here on the uh, edit menu at the very top, there's multiple Adobe Pro, oh, sorry, there's multiple profiles available. Uh, and you can see we've got Adobe Color, Landscape, Portrait, Standard, Vivid, and you know, those um, profiles, as you can see, just give me different. Uh, 
different outputs. Now, I normally leave it on Adobe Color and I just work on the file using all of the tools that it has available. Uh, but the new one that is available, which you may have noticed when I hit that drop down button, is the Adobe Adaptive. Now, it's in beta form, as you can see. Uh, it does use AI. Now, the beauty of this process is that it works on the image in a way that it uses AI to detect what's in the image and it applies a color profile to the image that it detects or sees or determines uh, that that particular image needs. And you can see straight away uh, with that profile uh, applied, we've got better saturation, we've got better contrast, better um, sharpness, and the image overall is looking much better. Now, this is obviously before, once again, I've applied any other changes to the image everything is still uh, at zero and ready to go so again if we just look at adobe color the profile when i imported the image or opened it up in adobe camera raw and the adobe adaptive uh, um, profile we're getting much better results straight out of the start of the race so we're getting much better results from the very beginning. So that's a, a really good thing to maybe investigate and have a play with it, see if it works for your images. And uh, it might just get you in the right direction to your edits as you move forward. Some great updates in Adobe Camera Raw version 17. Hope you are looking forward to having a go at playing with them, seeing if they can help with your workflow and uh, help you to create better images and better edits and better outcomes, whether it's for digital publishing or print. Thanks as always for stopping by. As always, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.